Happy New Year and welcome to the latest Cats Chat. I'm your host Stuart Woodrow and today we're diving into yesterday's gruelling football match between Tottenham Hotspur and Bournemouth where Spurs merged victorious with a 3-1 scoreline. However, this victory was far from comprehensive and we'll be looking back and getting through as many of the talking points as we can in the next 45 minutes or so. To sum it all up in the words of former Tottenham goalkeeper Rob Paul Robinson, Spurs win, Arsenal lose, not a bad way to end the year. Let's get started. All right, so we are joined by Ash. Say hello, Ash. Hey, mates. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you too. And we are joined by Benjamin Storm, Storm Lindbergh, who is also known as Cloud, Cloudburst <laughs> on TikTok. And I will be putting that link up for everybody so they can find you on there. That's <laughs> all right. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> No problem. We like to we like to be community led here. So hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Can't beat can't beat uh, getting a win, as you say, and and Arsenal yeah. losing. So well, you've had a fair bit to celebrate: win, New Year, and <laughs> a, a new a new monarch. So you know, yeah, things yeah, can't yeah. be going too badly for you. <laughs> All right, I mean, okay. it's, it's still got the Queen for like another fourteen uh, days or so. Days. Yeah. <laughs> a few days. Yeah. yeah. Gone. So, um, <laughs> before we get started on to talking about the Bournemouth game, there was something that I felt a little bit remiss from last time when we put, talked about Brighton. Um, after failing to discuss the injury problems Brighton had and how they overcame them, I think we need to start this by giving Bournemouth some credit for being difficult playing opponents and playing good football. Um, definitely at times they were the better side. I felt they were stronger side at the end than at the start. But again, I would like to say congratulations to Brighton on your win. You deserved it. You played the better football and definitely, probably, I would say, the the more organised and tactically set up team. Both sides had injuries. We didn't really mention that enough. So can we can we give Bournemouth some a little bit of chops? Because they were good, right? I've been impressed with them over the last couple of seasons. So uh, that's uh, even in that game, they, they were good as well, despite the um, injuries. Yeah, I, I think I think we dismiss the opposition. The Premier League is the toughest league in the world, and nobody nobody rolls over, you know. And they, they're all set up well. If they do the low block, or they play more attractively, like Brighton and maybe Bournemouth, um, um, they're they're all really really good competition. And I, I think our, some of our fan base just expects us to roll over them all. There's no way they they tackle they they cheat they pull shirts they play creative football they do they work they run it's not easy it's just not easy so um, yeah kudos to to those teams for coming to play I, I don't yeah. think we can we can get on our horse about tackling cheating or pulling shirts because you know we've put in a fair few of our own tackles we've got Romero yeah. for the tackles we've got Kudasevsky for the pulling shirts and uh, yeah we've got Lacelso for the Slight cheating, little little bit of uh, no, it's, not a, it's not a high horse. I'm, it's not a high horse. I'm saying they no, do joking. everything worry, we do, <laughs> everything we do. Yeah, and it, it's really good competition. It really is, you know. And and I think if now we're venturing off topic, rather well than but I may be back into to yesterday's game even. But um, even Bournemouth, you know. If, I didn't realize they'd come off of like was it eight games without a loss or something like that. Yeah. Um, they were in really good form, and yeah. you know when you look back at round eleven, um, they were actually sitting seventeenth with just six points yeah. uh, after eleven games, wow. and so that sort of competition throughout the Premier League, as you say, you know you play you know the team that was seventeenth barely getting a win after eleven games, you play that that team after. 19, 20 games, and um, they're actually <laughs> quite a good team. Yeah, I think yeah. the manager's come in and he, they've had a chance to bed in now and give him an opportunity to learn how he wants to play, and he's done a very, very good job there. Yeah. Um, when we played them earlier in the season, there was, some, there was some signs that they could play good football, but they hadn't quite got it together. I'll be honest, I thought potentially they made a bit of a mistake with their their starting mm-hmm. lineup because the players that came on Billings and Semenya was it who came up at the end really made them look a lot more dangerous and I thought they were Alex better side Scott as well didn't Alex come Scott on. yeah yeah the Guernsey wonder kid who's a Tottenham supporter yeah absolutely <laughs> although he's just coming back off injury you can't really expect too much from him but I mean I, yeah he I scored a goal didn't he, yeah. he did yeah. yeah his first goal as well yeah so yeah 
Um, that's why I just think potentially a, a trap we've fallen into a bit too often is not giving the opposition enough credit. So there awesome. we go. The opposition's got some credit. Now, what did we do <laughs> right? So I think and this was obviously when I saw the team lineup, I went, what the f yeah, yeah, me too. Because <laughs> I, I did not see Benson Kerr being back like that. It was totally out of the blue. And I think, despite him being rusty, he's obviously been out a long time with a long injury. And then uh, further, again, despite him being rusty, you could see how calm and composed he was on the ball often. And you know, I, the rustiness does kick in when you're you're not match ready, match fit, or whatever. You're not mm. used to the tempo. If you're trying to be composed and you know, keep hold of the ball a bit and control play, you can get caught out. I think it, that happened a few times. But when I saw him, I think we got that right and playing um, Giovanni Lo Celso at the same time because that meant we had two players who could actually receive the ball and pass it around, control play and tempo a bit. Um, and I think that was a problem against Brighton. We only had one of those players in Kulisewski. Yeah. Um, uh, Lo Celso was our man of the match in the end. He was voted man of the match by the fans, um, which I think was about spot on, really. He was he was very, very good. Kind of begs the question why we haven't seen more of this kind of player. Is it the players around him or is it just he's finally settling in with 18 months left on his contract? Or he's injured all the time. <laughs> he is yeah. made of glass. We, we can... He is made of glass. Yeah. yeah. He's... Because that pass, that outside of the foot of the pile, that, that's a messy type thing. And, you know, when they try it and it doesn't come off, it looks like really showboating. But mm. when it comes off, it's like, holy jeez, that's fantastic, you know. Uh, it was a good pass, you know, really, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, and with with um, who's who's going, some other guys going now, we're going to need Lo Celso. And good for him. Yeah. And Bentenko. He is such class. I, you know, some somebody made a reference that oh, he wasn't going into the tackles full blooded. I'm going, well, of course not. You know, it was with me. <laughs> was it you? Yeah, it was you. <laughs> no, yeah. and I, I, I absolutely meant. I it was fully understand. I fully understand why he wasn't doing it, but I noticed for the first thirty minutes that it was maybe not the player we saw. Uh, like one and a half year ago, one year ago, before his his big injury. I, I fully understand like i've got four knee surgeries in my right knee i you know coming back is like no i i don't want to be near anyone who uh, is going to tackle um yeah but I, um, yeah i mean i i had a knee injury when i was playing football many 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 years ago and i would like to point out my playing football is sunday league not and probably the worst player on my sunday league team but yeah i had a knee injury and when i came back just that just the sharpness was never came back never yeah. So you know, it's it's a it's a big mental block, I think. Yeah, he'll, but he'll I think, I think he, so. Hopefully, he'll get over it very soon. He definitely will. I'm sure he will. It seemed like he was back from his um, was it ACL injury. Yeah. He was quite back. He was playing for the national team a few games, I think, and he looked fine against uh, Villa before a certain player <laughs> came on and then uh, yeah, him. Yeah, um, but it's um, yeah, I. I do worry a bit that that was that was one of my other sort of questions uh, you know with the injuries we've had we've had so many injuries I hope other players don't become like who's next like who who's uh, we can't have more injuries by now obviously Benton Kerr back is fantastic but mm. um uh, well, Valise is out and Saar well, yeah, he's going yeah. to yeah. Be he's out yeah. As well. yeah 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 well, I mean, at least we don't know how long it's going to be. Saar, yeah. by the sound of it, is a hamstring injury. Um, he said, yeah. Ange in his post match said he'd, he'd felt his hamstring, um, which could be <laughs> what, five, eight weeks, which means he'd be out of African Cup of Nations, which is really disappointing for him. I mean, we're not going to, as a club, we're not going to see the benefit because he'll still won't be available to us and we'll still be missing a player for that period of time. Yeah. But, you know, a young player like that who was going to be starting for his country in a major competition. You know, it's it's disappointing for him that he's not going to be able to do that. But I see um I see Ash has got the Welsh hat on. So I think there there might be a player he wishes to talk about who yes. who did play rather well, I thought. Right. And, <laughs> and I think you guys might might agree that a lot more people are seeing the value of uh, Ben Davis 
Um, and probably he's going to be our captain for the next few games. Not that we have many, but uh, he probably will be our captain. He's such a professional. He actually, um, you do, it helped that your doggy was back, of course, you know, to help mm -hmm. to help out. But uh, I'm just so pr proud of him. And uh, 10 years, he's our longest serving um, pl player. Um, such a professional, and I think he's actually got better. And maybe Ange is making him better, which is even fantastic for us, you know. So he's a is... he's a completely different player to the one that joined us. I feel. I mean, he's still left footed and a defender, but yeah. he, when he joined us, he was a flying wing back. You know, you you'd see him playing for Swansea up right, right up at the corner, play. Yeah. You know, being strong and being really really attacking. Um, and then he joined Spurs, and we didn't. I don't think we ever saw the best of him in that in that sense. But then, you know, during his time with Wales, he's played further back. He's played more of a defensive role. He's played uh, on the left side of a of a back three, and yeah. shown he can do it. And now he's showing he can do it on the left side of a back two, which is really really good because he's so, he's helped us out so much. <laughs> I I think you kind of speaking of defense, like Ben Davies now has played nearly the same amount of minutes as Van de Ven. Mm -hmm. or whatever his name is did uh, he uh, he's played 900 minutes of football mickey has played 945 minutes of football in our season so whatever credit we kind of find in having our team set three points off top spot is probably in in a way equally down to davis and mickey i obviously would prefer mickey in there but mm -hmm. as, but but they've played the same amount of minutes same games um they can both take some pride in in where we are at the moment, uh, and, and yeah, it's a... yeah. I think I think he's been massively, massively important for us. Um, just having someone that can come in and can slot in and do that job. But I I do believe this was the first three points we've had when there's been an Emerson and Davis combination at the back, the first win. So mm, they've, they've played a few games, so it's not been it's not been great. Emerson, I thought, was good yesterday, and I, I was worried when, you know, it looked like he may have to come off because he looked like he picked up an injury. Uh, I hope he hasn't got anything more than a little knock because he managed to see the game out. But hmm. I, I wonder if this was just a thought I had now, if in time Emerson can sort of become the right-sided Davis. <laughs> uh, obviously, Davis has played left back for us and centre back, mm -hmm. left side of centre back. Emerson, I'm I'm not I don't think going forward is his strongest part of his game, but he can cover right back and probably right center back if he work. I'm not saying he's the best at it, but neither was like a Davis at 23 or 24 years old was probably not the best at it either. I can't remember how old Royale is to be honest, but uh, I think it's about 24. Yeah, I think it's 24. Yeah. yeah, 24. So with time, you know, who knows what can if, if Emerson can become that sort of same. Um, player that can cover several positions there. And I know, you know, he's talked so often about having flexibility within the squad and, you know, having players like Emerson, players like Davis, um, even players like Skip, who can play as a number six, play as a number eight, and even in preseason played as a number 10, I believe. You know, they've got that ability to be flexible and, and switch into different positions, and that's so important for us. But um, I know Ash wants to talk about Ange's secret source, the philosophy, the tactics. I mean, how do you feel about it? I uh, I actually got a, a friend of mine who's actually uh, an, a lawyer, lives in New York. He was on his way after visiting his mom back to New York. Uh, he'd actually lived in London for a couple of years, went to many games, met his wife-to-be there. She was American, but she was also a lawyer. I met her there. Anyway, he called me and we were chatting because he was waiting in, 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 you know, for the plane. And he says, he says to me, so Ash, what is Anja's secret source? And I went, you know what? I'm going to ah, bring that up in the, the cash chat. Um, and then I spoke to an, uh, another Welsh friend, John, uh, the guy who lent me the uh, the photo there that in my mm. in my background. And we, we came to the uh, thinking that it has to do with the players and if you uh, obviously motivational aspect of it but if you tell the players that i want you to play this way but if you make mistakes that's not on you that's on me as opposed to conti saying you know what he would say he would or even joe jose would just call out the player for making a mistake you know and i think 
it's probably a sea change to have a manager be that proactive to, to let these young men, millionaires, young millionaires know that, that they can be themselves. Because I'm trying to think of what are what are the tactics? What is he doing? I thought ask you guys then. What what else is he doing? And I think it's it's the attitude that he spreads to the players, which gives them freedom. And one other small thing, it starts since all of our play starts with the goalie, Vicario. I think that was such a great buy. He is such also a sea change from Hugo, as great as Hugo was. We must, all must admit Hugo's distribution. He would panic when when he was high pressed and whatever. This guy doesn't, and I think that's also part of the magic sauce is that he is calm enough to get that ball out. And I know he's also doing some longer balls, which is nice to vary it up a little bit. So the two things: giving the players the freedom, and then starting with Vicario, his his cool and confidence at the back. So that's my suggestion. I throw it open. What do you think the secret is to Ange's magic sauce? I think part of it is the confidence side of it. Um, he goes and he says, look, if there's a problem, the problem is going to be down to what I'm bringing in. Right. You know, if, if, if you're doing what I'm asking you to and something goes wrong, then that's down to me and I will take the blame. And we haven't had that for quite some time, <laughs> at least the last three managers. Um, so to have that now is very, very refreshing. But also, yes. it's the confidence of the players because you're not saying to them, right, I'm going to micromanage you and I'm going to tell you exactly where you should be every single time. You know, this isn't a Claudio Ranieri, I'm going to blow a whistle when you pass the halfway line. That was Santini as well, yeah. Blow a whistle when you're in the wrong position. Santini, when you if, if you're a fullback and you pass the half line, I'm going to pull training back and I'm going to blow a whistle on you. That would be, a, you know, instead he's saying to people, go out there and play attacking football, the kind of football that, people want to see people you know pay money to see and also the kind of football these players grew up playing when they were kids the kind of stuff that they dreamed of playing and I think that's so underrated when yeah. I started playing football I did yeah. nobody like ever said we're gonna make you into the greatest defender in the world it was like hey we're gonna go out and we're gonna play and we're gonna kick the ball around and we'll have some fun and we'll score some goals right I I do think as well that uh well, but, yeah, funnily enough, one of the words I wrote, you, you said, uh, what is Ange's secret sauce? One of the words yeah. I wrote down right at that was confidence or like understated confidence. He said, that was underplayed confidence in a way. He's not like uh, out there the same way. You know, I feel like someone like Conte or, or Mourinho was arrogantly confident. Ange is, is you know, he's pretty quietly <laughs> confident in a way, but he believes in his way. And, and as you say, put the players out there to play football. And I, 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 my philosophy in football as well is that defenders, defenders don't like to defend. They want to see their team score goals. Well, they obviously they mm -hmm. like to defend, but you know we see Romero go up and score. He's got scored like two goals this season or whatever. He's over the moon when he scores a goal. Um, but but obviously a defender likes to put in a tackle too, and they kind of celebrate the tackles too. I see that with Vicario as well, celebrating a defender's tackle. I really love that aspect. I think that's something that Ange has brought in as well. That if you could put a good tackle, then you fucking celebrate it like you've scored a goal. Um, and that whole you know you defend so your team can go and score goals. You don't defend to try and keep defending a game and sit back further and further back and. Um, like we saw in the last couple of seasons. I think that's really great. Obviously, you know, I suppose some of the secret sources uh just copying Pep Guardiola. Uh, but, <laughs> I'm just copying Pep, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But that that was sort of into another point. I, I remember seeing an interview with Ange, I think it was before he joined, where the, the interviewer asked, uh, what is your what kind of formation? Do you play Ange or like stuff like that? I can't remember exactly. And Ange was like, I listen, I don't really care too much about formation. Like, you know, it's uh it's not important if it's four three three or four two three one or four four two or you know. And you see that with our formation, your doggy, Emerson, all of a sudden they're like <laughs> all over the all over the place in a good way. <laughs> But it's um, having yeah, he... the the players have the confidence to switch and change positions and yeah. move about the pitch and be in places. Because they know they've got their managers back. The other, I mean, yeah. I've, I've said it. I don't know if I've said it on here, but I've certainly said it on the forum. 
it's so good to have an adult in charge at this club <laughs> because we've had two babies in the last, well, out of a lot, the previous three managers. Mourinho, who would throw his toys at the pram and just, oh, terrible. I was just, he was just awful for the club. And then Conte, who, you know, the ultimate, I've never seen anyone blow up the way that he did after the Southampton game, you know, and, but it wasn't, it wasn't even surprising when he did it because we'd seen that coming for so long. There were so many signs that he was just going to throw some childish tantrum and just completely mess things up. And that's absolutely what he did. And we stabilized and we got better afterwards, but now we've got Ange, who's an adult, an actual full grown cuddly bear adult who can do, you know, give confidence back to everyone. And I thought, Yesterday, when the ref was coming up to book him and he was going, he was having a chat with him. I'm pretty sure I know exactly the words that Ange said to him. I'm pretty sure it's was, "It's all right, mate. You do your job." Because the ref had to book him and he knew it, but he wasn't going to make life difficult for him. So he said, "You go ahead, you do your job, and we'll we'll move on." And that's what it was. And afterwards, the the press saying to him, "You know, oh, what was it? The you know the the, the all the fuss with the Bournemouth bench." And he said, "Oh, we're just wishing each other New Year, mate." He's not getting, yeah, yeah. he's exactly. not interested in getting into the minutiae of the the problems or rehashing old things. He just wants to move on. So he makes a joke, and everybody moves on. It's so good to have an adult in charge at Tottenham Hotspur again. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> Speaking of, of yesterday's game, one player we haven't mentioned, not a whole lot anyway today, and I thought he was he was actually my man of the match, Yu Doggy, was so important for us in defense as well. I think he sort of uh, mopped up behind the defense uh, offensive line a few times uh, when Bournemouth players got into very good attacking positions. He, he came in and sort of uh, cleaned up, and uh, it was he was very good as well. Yeah, I've been following a Twitter thread. I've joined in on the Twitter thread um, this week talking about Udogi. Um, and the, the person who started it was trying to say Udogi should be a midfielder. And I'm thinking should, Udogi should not be a midfielder. Why would you take your best left back who's influential and playing so well and having such an effect on the games and put him into a position where he probably isn't going to be as good? He doesn't have the range of passing that a, a top, top level left back needs. Mm -hmm. But then yesterday I saw him and I was like, damn, that boy could do a job at centre-back and look really classy while doing it because he yeah. was so good. He was just mopping things up at the back as well, as well as doing the rest of his work. So, Could I ask another question? And Once again, back to the... These are all great points about Andrew's uh, source. Um, but um, I don't watch Man City that much tactically. But is this inverted fullback thing... Is this relatively new? Does 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 Pep do that? I don't I don't know. Um, is this actually part of the source as well? Is that he he's tactically he's doing something that's kind of not seen that much? I don't know. Is that what do you guys know? Well, Pep does play or has played previously with an inverted fullback. He's never played with two inverted fullbacks, and he's admitted this himself in a in a press conference. But yeah. I mean, you know. Ange can say, I'm just copying Pep, mate. But Ange was doing this 27 years ago when Pep was still a player. Was, so, he, was, he, always, was he always doing this? He was doing this in his past? He was, he was doing this when, you know, when he was at Brisbane. So, you know, it's, it's been it's been going on quite some time. And I, I think it's got to be said, uh, I think uh, Pep Guardiola plays with more like a, a three-man defence. Like mm -hmm. uh, Ruben Diaz, uh, maybe... Who else? Like Guardiol and Carl Walker as sort of the, the three man centre back pairing. Carl Walker's kind of tugging in, but also overlap. I, it's it sort of depends, I guess, what happens in the games. But um, yeah, I, I think it's slightly different. But I do think the press has sort of picked up on you know, uh, it's, it's slightly different, but still similar in, in ways and in attacking joy and and possession and like, we, we just want to score goals. We're not going to sit back. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's easy to look at because there is that link with the City group because Ange, of course, previously was in charge of Yokohama Marinos, which oh, okay. is part of the same group as Manchester City. So, mm -hmm. you know, they did meet briefly when they played a, a friendly quite a few years ago. But Ange said that's the only time he's ever met him. He's never actually sat down and talked tactics with him or anything like that. Um, I genuinely think this, these are Ange's tactics. He hasn't taken them from somewhere else. Um, but at the same time, I'm not saying Guardiola has taken them from Ange because there's a lot of people out there that have played inverted yeah. fullbacks. And Ange played, sorry, uh, Pep played, un played under a few good managers during his time yeah. in Barcelona. <laughs> yeah. So it might have picked up a couple of ideas and he's a smart enough guy to come up with his own ideas as well. So, you know, what can you say?
I, I he, think, yeah. Go on. <laughs> he, when we played City, he was trying because he knew what we were going to do. He was trying an interesting way. He was putting man on man marking on our players. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, uh, it seemed to work, to be honest. It's sort of somewhat limited, including the, the inverted fullbacks. But we still scored three goals. So obviously, we broke. We broke through that man-for-man -man parking, uh, parking, marking, um, and I'm I'm just just wondering also is it is it so different that it it makes it difficult for other because some of the ways we cut through these other teams it's magical you know it's like wow it doesn't happen all the time but when it does it's really wonderful and is that they don't know how to deal with it or what because magic sauce. Is it the players also, the types of players he's brought in? I, I don't think he's necessarily brought in, you know, obviously he's brought in some players, but, you know, last a, a half, well, a year ago, we had Kulisevsky, Richarlison, Son. We had Hoibio has been playing just as many minutes as, as uh, Madison has been playing this season. I know I'm not a big fan of, of Hoibio, but just to give credit to him still, you know, we are sitting three points off top. He's played equally as many minutes as Madison. Same with Davis for van die ven and uh royale has played almost the same minutes as mm -hmm. uh romero if i recall correctly um so you know some of these players were still at last i think with the inverted fullbacks and, and two of them at that <laughs> um i think it, it it's something that other teams struggle to deal with and the way for instance brennan johnson over you know he runs in behind and there's a ball Teams will struggle against that, but I think at some point we will probably have to reinvent that in just a slight bit because teams are going to figure out a way to deal with it. It usually always happens, whether you're City or this or that. We saw that with, um, you know, when Kane and Son was playing and all we did for a whole lot of games was get the ball to Kane, ball over the top to Son. Mm -hmm. no, team could, no team could defend against us doing that for... 30 games like it, just get the ball to Kane over the top to Sun goal it worked and it kept working then it, did, it stopped working and I think that's usually the case with tactics and I'm sure Pep Guardiola has changed some things over the years at City uh whether that's playing Haaland now as big striker compared to Aguero who was smaller one things change and you adapt and that's that's probably where we'll We'll see what happens. Like when that point comes, where what small changes can Ange make to keep the success going? I don't well, know. <laughs> we're already seeing some of it. Have you noticed in the last couple of games, Vicario will kick the ball longish? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, changing it up, and I'm sure that the the opposition going, what's this? This is not this is not the pass out from the back. Uh, obviously, I'm sure that's an Ange type of, uh, I don't know, under what circumstances we do it, but it is refreshing, to, as you were just saying, to have uh, uh, evolved the plan, evolve the the inverted fullback plan that we have getting the ball out. Yeah, but again, I do it's, think it's, it's, it's a trap that people can fall into because we were doing some of that earlier in the season as well. Even when people say, "Oh, they must play out from the back every single time," no, it's not. It's not been the case. There were some longer yeah. balls earlier in the season. Brentford, um, yeah, know, certainly there was there was some longer balls being played, but they were good longer balls. They were longer balls that went to feet that actually had a purpose. It wasn't just to hoof it out, which is one of the reasons why I don't think Hoiberg fits this because Hoiberg is prone to the occasional hoof. And if I'm being ultra critical, I believe it was Hoiberg losing the ball that led to their goal yesterday. I, so, I agree. I agree. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not his biggest fan. And and, and I've said. I that. think everyone knows what? watching this. I am definitely not his biggest. Yeah, fan. I've, <laughs> I've said that quite a few. I'll, I just still want to give credit to those players yeah. who have obviously played just as many minutes as the players we're talking about. Oh, we're missing this and that player. We clearly are, mm. but we're still sitting sitting so high on the table. Uh, despite the injuries, where you know, I remember my Arsenal fan, a friend, my Arsenal friend, who's uh, he said, uh, you know, now you're getting all these injuries. Watch what happened. This was back in the Chelsea game when we lost that. You've got all these injuries now, you know, mate. You're gonna sit tenth uh, or eleventh in the table mm -hmm. uh, after the next six or seven games. Well, now we played ten more games. We're not. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it was Meza Ozil said, um, who was it the bot. bot 
Bottle Club FC is back when we lost one game. Since yeah. then, they've we've won four out of five, and they've won one out of five. So, yeah, that's coming back to bite you, isn't it, Messer? Yeah, what, <laughs> what about going into January now? Uh, what do we think about the fact that three of those players, by the way, Salah is also going. By the way, he just missed a penalty. Um, oh, really? I saw. I, I just saw. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so those three players, Sonny, very important, and you know the two midfielders. Uh, uh, although both of them <laughs> would be unable to play for us anyway, you know. Um, yeah. So, what do we think about those three players? And uh, for instance, even Sonny, how do we replace someone like Sonny? I I was sitting thinking earlier. There's a. It's, it's such a shame that Velis got injured. Because I think he would have gotten some minutes for as a central striker, and mm-hmm. perhaps Richarlison on the uh, left wing. Left. Yeah. But that said, I I kind of been thinking more and more about that. Uh, what's his name? Jo- Jota Jota from uh, played on yeah. Celtic. I think if we can, I don't know when we can bring him in, or if that's going to be a January thing or a summer thing. I think he would be a good signing or what is it free i don't even know the situation on that there was a whole thing about saudi arabia and all that and this club there and i don't know the situation but i um i think bringing him in would be a good thing um on the other hand though and i've I've said this before we're not playing that many games in january luckily three games yeah Yeah. if we win the fa cup game don't we play another one at the end of the month uh, games, including the FA Cup. Yeah. No, no, no. But isn't the, the next round? Somebody had said this possibly. Oh, I, I'm not oh, quite sure when okay, the fourth round right. takes place. Okay, fair um, enough. Fair but enough. in terms of Jota, um, so Jota signed for a club in Saudi Arabia, uh, and they they've been limited to only six foreign base player foreign players um, per team, and he's been the odd man out for much of the season. But um, starting January, Saudi Arabian clubs are going to be able to name ten foreign players so he would actually be able to get into side and of course there's he's got a new manager because uh, uh nuno yeah. was sacked and it's now of course gone to uh, nottingham forest but apparently he's not particularly impressed the new manager either and Ange does know him and we do kind of have a need for a player out on the left that can get involved in the goals but kulu can play right ben and johnson can play left and Richardson through the middle. I, as I, as you said, it's very, very sad to see Veliz get injured um, because he was he was looking useful. Let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was so impressive. I mean, it was like I'm gonna. I think it was potentially stupid, but it was so impressive for him to be getting up and trying to run and try, you know, hobbling on one leg effectively, trying to get the ball, you know, trying to do whatever he could to help this out. And I felt for him. I really felt for I... him. I well for him and also there was a moment uh, towards the end of the game where Heiberg got the ball and there was a pass on for Sun as well yeah in a counter attack and Heiberg decided to pass it to Veliz who could barely move <laughs> could barely and I was move. like why <laughs> why are you passing it to the player who can barely move or touch the ball you know the Sun pass was more difficult admittedly but hey, you're a professional footballer being paid a million. Uh, like not like I don't know how much he's being paid, but like I, you know, I could I could play that part. I'd play that pass for uh, you know, <laughs> if I'm no, but it's I'm not sure I'd be able to run at that point in the match myself. No, I mean, no, like, no, same, 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 <laughs> same. But <laughs> but it, it, that, that, yeah, that that annoyed me that pass. Now was coming back to Hoiberg as well. But I think Belize, you know, it was stupidly impressive that he kept yeah. kept on like going um and of course so, that was what led to the massive ruck with the bournemouth bench because they thought that we were trying to get him to go down and feign injuries to try and waste yeah. some time and he's like no no we want him to go down so he can come off the pitch and we can play with 10 which helps you <laughs> yeah. yeah so so what about we haven't really mentioned it this thing about sunny then not only his goals but also his leadership and his mm-hmm. his, his whole example because he's su- he is such a professional like ben davis such a professional and he leads by example maybe they're not the rah-rah type of guy but he, he's always so do we actually re- need to replace do or what how do how do we do yes his leadership and his goals have to be replaced uh, well we've been I- very very heavily linked to redu dragashan um from genoa um who 
currently, I believe, plays in the centre of a back three, but watching him play, he does cover the left and the right. He's obviously very, very right-footed, um, but it looks like he can play on the left. But I think maybe we need someone for the right more than we need someone for the left now. Also, um, talk is that Van der Ven will be back, potentially back for the Manchester United match. Part of me says... Do we actually think he'd start that match? He's, you know, just coming back from injury. Are we going to give him a chance to properly recover and be 100% fit? Or are we going to risk him? When we've got Ben Davis doing such a good job, um, Man United are not particularly great this season. Um, and we should have enough about us to, to see them off. But are we going to keep Ben Davis on for his leadership? Because it's pretty sure he's going to be captain for the side for the next few weeks. Yeah, he is. I, uh, what about the think- goals? I just, yeah, just to get back to to uh, to the point about Sun quickly, I I because I was I made a post about Sun earlier as well in a different place saying I I think Sun I I like Sun being central this season as a central mm-hmm. striker because I don't think he's quite you know he's never been a, a player sitting right on the sideline a wide winger thing but I think his his movement is still good he's not got the pace anymore that he used to have but i think the the sort of catalyst for sun being a great striker is getting our midfielders back getting madison yeah. back to feed into sun's movement and even benson kerr and, and all these kind of things that will provide some goals now sun is going to be out obviously and that's that's the question here um for like until the asian cup or whatever happens there uh, sometime in february if they go all yeah the way through. yeah I, I think it's going to be Richarlison central, and then I I don't think he's good enough either. But there's that, and technically he's a bit erratic. And Sun is as well in front of goal. It's like you know we had big chances as much as we talk about. Well, the game. Yeah, be very careful there because there's stats released today um, no, listing yeah. all the players that have missed big chances. Sun has missed three big chances the entire season. He's completely but, outstripped his his. You know, I, XG. I, I, I don't disagree with that. My, I think let's an, another word I used was he's indecisive at times. Yeah, there was uh, yeah. yeah, there was a couple of chances. So he missed one earlier in the game. Ball coming across, he hit us with his left foot. It went quite. It was in the edge of the box. You know, wide wide of goal. Um, later on, he had two chances where I think he was waiting for Brennan Johnson to catch up. Mm. And I think if he had been more decisive, you know, I, I keep thinking someone like Kane. Would have okay. No one's catching up. I'm gonna put it, you know, the bottom right corner with my left foot. Boom, done. Job done. One nil. Um, and I might sort of miss that from Sonny if he's to be sort of the consistent striker, especially in a team that's missing Madison in midfield. Um, I think Richarlison is also equally. You know, we've seen him miss quite a lot of chances, um, but it's what we have to do with. I think in January. <laughs> And it's good to see Richarlison getting in, continuing his uh, rich vein in front of goal. That's his five, go- five goals, five games. Yeah. 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 So he's, he's doing very, very nicely. Um, and I think it's coming into form at just the right time because we are going to be missing Sonny. Um, and I think we've got the players to fill the positions. It's whether that impact, that personality can be replicated. And that's so difficult to do good because point. he is such a big personality for our side. I yeah, I, and I think uh, this was part of part of my point from a post earlier that Sonny, if if we play like yesterday and against Brighton, where we do not have the players that are press resistant like Madison, Ben, mm-hmm. Benton Kerr obviously, but against Brighton it was only Kulisevsky, Then I think Sonny is going to struggle because we're going to keep playing the ball into him. Oh, he's our best player, but Sonny is not good with his back towards the opposition goal and having to sort of hold the ball up. So that's always going to be a struggle. I think once we have those midfielders back, then all of a sudden, Sun is going to score a lot of goals, and he's a top four central striker, looking to strike all of a sudden when we have that back. But when you play him in a setup like we did against Brighton, and even Bournemouth, he's probably not going to look like a striker that could, you know, endlessly score goals like he did for the first... No, the first 10 games, didn't he score like nine goals or something? I can't remember how many. He scored quite a few goals. Something crazy like that, yeah. Yeah. I think there's, I think it's horses for courses between, choosing between Son and and Richardson. Um, Richardson should be chosen for games where you need the ball to to stick a little bit more up front. And Son should definitely be chosen where you've got 
you know, the option to play the ball behind. So like Burnley, where he scored a hat trick, you know, you needed someone who could who could make that run, get behind their defence, and, and just almost clinically put yeah. the ball away because his finishing is so good. He's so clean with striking I, I, the ball. He is. But at the same time, though, I kept thinking what would have happened this season if we had had Kane playing the central striker? How many goals would Kane have had in these 20 games we played now? I'm going to stick my neck out and say he would have scored 20 goals in a, for a team by now uh, in those 20 games he'd stayed fit because he puts those those chances away that we see whether through indecisiveness from Son or erratic technique from from Richarlison. I think Kane puts away a lot of those chances. Uh, so that would have been interesting. I know, you know, we got rid of him and we moved on in some ways to something better, but it's just an interesting thought. I think he would have probably been around like 18, 20 goals by now. Um, the way I we were playing. Kane, if Kane had been in this side from the seat, I think we would be in the top two. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to stick my neck out and say top, but it no, no, kind but... of feels like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's just, <laughs> If Madison and Van der Ven and Bentico yeah. had been, yeah, they would be top two as well. So yeah, yeah. I actually think we moved on from Harry. Yeah. I and think we have, and yeah. And I think in some ways, as much as we love the guy, we're actually we're going to be more flexible. And, I agree. You know, we really are, and it was time to move on. I I know Stu has an interesting point that why go to the Bundesliga because you know. They're kind of crappy defenders over there, you know. It's like the top scorers last year got 18, 19 goals. He's already beaten that. It's like what? Yeah. Nope. Um well, he's he's on course to finish top top scorer in the league with more than 40 goals, which is ridiculous at this point in time. Um right. he scored 21 goals in the first half of the season before the winter break, which no foreign player has ever done. And and uh, that is from quite a few games, if I recall correctly. It's only yeah. like how many games have they played? Uh, 15 games. Yeah, and he's got oh, twenty three goals. He's scored. What is it? Twenty one, I believe. Twenty one okay. goals. He's scored, yeah. but yeah. he's also played in one cup final, and didn't, lost. they didn't win. They yeah. lost. Um, he played in the equivalent of the the German League Cup, and yeah. lost to. Uh, when I say he played, I think he played about five minutes. But is it the Kane curse? Is stri- striking Bayern he's, Munich? He, he is also that Bayern Munich is not top in the Bundesliga. They're, they're like not top. Four, they're second four, in the league. I mean, they're four points. Four, four points. Yeah, else. yeah, four yeah. points behind. And like, but they have a game in hand. But yeah, it's a uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, I, I mean, I've said it before. I really don't think Thomas Tuchel is a great manager for for Kane. Um, really? Really? If it, if I was if I was part of his management team, if I was part of his advice, I'd be saying you do not join the Thomas Tuchel team. In Germany, because he's all he can do is lose. If they win the Bundesliga, so what? It's sure. the Bundesliga, it's Bayern Munich, they're supposed to. If they win the German Cup, so what? Absolutely. It's the German Cup, oh, yeah. they're supposed to because they're Bayern. The only thing he can win that actually gives him any credit would be the Champions League. Yeah. And and I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, just to uh, kind of, this is come back to point um, Ashley was making earlier about Vicario being such a good purchase and just kind of bring it back to uh, to Spurs uh, Spurs talk Um, one thing I've I still think is going to be interesting to see about him is what happens when he makes the first costly mistake because it's going to happen every keeper makes a costly mistake at some point we've seen it happen with I think it was Paul Robinson after he did the mistake for England where it went over his foot he he never really seemed to recover it started making lots of bad weird mistakes gomez for instance i know he was always had a mistake in him but it seemed to get worse over time uh you know even loris he started making more and more mistakes after you know what happens how how well does vicario recover from his first mistake it's gonna it's gonna happen you know he's gonna accidentally throw the ball into his own net or something weird's gonna happen where it's like you know we're gonna be like and and then what happens next game that that's the interesting part for me regarding goalkeepers how do they recover the thing with Vicario is he didn't come from a top, top, top Italian side. I mean, Empoli, he, he conceded a fair number of goals last season playing for Empoli, and he didn't let it affect him. He was consistently one of the better goalkeepers, despite sometimes letting in three, four goals. You know, And we've seen 
we've seen him let in four goals on two occasions, and he just comes back and he's just as strong in the next match. So I think, I've got I no think worries my, on that. Then I think my my problem, or not problem, but worry is not so much whether we concede. If, if a goalkeeper concedes five goals, but it's mostly due to the defense or the setup, you know, then he doesn't take take the the brunt of that personally. Yeah. But if it's like a, you know he's trying to catch it and it falls out of his hands into the goal or whatever. Then it's more so directly on him. Is he going to be nervous for the next catch? Is he going to this and that? That's that's what I think will be interesting to see. And hopefully he just. I, I think he will be just fine with it. I, mm. you know, I don't have. I don't have big concerns because we also have Ange as a manager who will be like, "Hey, mate, it's 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 right. It happens. Don't worry." Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you see, well, obviously, you see, we're it... we're now a little bit shorter on the goalkeepers because um, Hugo Luis has has gone. Uh, it's left us for the MLS and for the for LA for the bright lights, the the Californian sunshine. So <laughs> you know maybe Ash will be seeing him on the streets and can say bonjour for us. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that leaves us. Time. We've got yeah. Brandon Austin, um, Fraser Forster, and the guy whose name I currently can't remember. Whiteman back at Alfie sorry? Whiteman. Alfie Whiteman. Alfie Whiteman. Yeah, there you go. What, what um, are those guys? What are those other guys like? We know what Forster's like. What about those other guys? I don't. I don't know. Uh, Both maybe of them have been out on loan and made their made their competitive appearances elsewhere. Um, they both struggled at times, but they weren't playing for clubs that had great defenses. Um, but again, beyond preseason appearances, neither of them have been given a chance really to show what they can do. So you know, let's not be too harsh if they ever do need to play. Yeah, like I don't even know. I think Alfie Whiteman is twenty five now. I'm not sure yeah. what Brandon Austin is. Uh, also, about twenty five soon. The thing is, both when you might get... be out of contract in the summer as well. So, uh, I think when you get to that point in your career as a 24, 25 year old and you've not played consistent football, I know as a goalkeeper, you can kind of push it a bit, but they're probably, you know, they're probably not going to be starters for us or even second choices, yeah. I think. But that just, doesn't matter because what you could do, just like Paolo Gazzaniga, is you can go to Spain, go, yeah, go to Spain and top the league. With his current side, so (laughs) with Girona. So well done, Paolo. Um, Didn't ever look particularly brilliant for us, solid at times, but also had the occasional mistake in him. But obviously with January coming, um, it does look like we're going to be getting a defender because they're pushing very, very heavily for at least one. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw one in the next couple of days. Um, But after that... This guy Dragerson probably, this guy Dragus, and he's from, is he from Juve? Uh, he was at Juve. He, Paratici signed him while he was at U- Juve, um, but then he left to go to Genoa. He only he was only at Juve oh. for one season, I believe. Um, but obviously, Paratici knows him. Um, he's been voted, I think, best young defender of the league in in Serie A last season, um, and been you know a mainstay in the in the Genoa side this season. So there's him. We've been heavily linked with. There's um, oh the French guy. Um, Todibo, uh, what was it? Todibo, Todibo, Todibo. That... yeah, Jean Claude, yeah. Jean Claude, Jean Claire, Todibo, yeah. Which to me, it's, it's, being French, it should go Todibo, but apparently it's Todibo, <laughs> Todibo, okay. which I, I guess is coming from his his African roots. That's the pronunciation for it. So you know, I hey, however they want us to pronounce it, that's the way I will follow. Um, if we sign him, of course, but I don't think we're going to be getting him. Nice, by the sound of it want to hold on to him until the summer which doesn't yeah. really surprise me and then in the summer there'll be a bidding war for him and Manu will be involved because of their ownership link so there yeah. is there is one center back that i think we could get for quite cheap that i'd like to see us go for at least as, as like a backup mm-hmm. option to both romero and and uh our left center backs as well and that is a player a I'm not sure if I post about him, but he's playing in the Austrian league, and he's like I think he's one of the best defenders there. Uh, Strahinja Pavlovich, I think his name mm-hmm. is. And yeah, he, I saw your post on him. Yeah, yeah, I think he actually looks quite good, and he, he'd be. I think we'd be able to get him. You know, obviously from that league, twelve, fifteen million pounds. I'm guessing um, that is relatively cheap. You know, cover I'd say, and if you could, yeah. <clears throat> I think we've also been linked to, uh, going by memory, Ko Itakura, who who plays yeah. in Belgium. Um, there's a player who plays for Union saint in uh, in the Swiss League. Who, sorry? 
the Japanese fellow? Yeah, another Japanese player um, who we've been linked to. He's done Mashida, I think his name is. Um, and then there's Cacheres, who plays in Uruguay, who That's originally... <laughs> When he was first talked about, they were talking four million pounds. Now they're talking ten. So this price has gone up quite a lot in the last couple of months or so. What did you say his name was? Kiriches. Okay, Kiriches. it sounded a bit it sounded a bit too much like Kiriches, Kiriches, or whatever his name no, was. No. <laughs> um, did, you, did you see? I don't know, if, but um, oh, no. <laughs> apparently Dragushan knows who we are. He's he, like he wants to join Spurs because when he was younger. And he's only 21. When he was younger, his idol was playing in central defence for Tottenham Hotspur. And I'm like, that's got to be Vlad. <laughs> yeah. like, Just don't play like him, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's uh, the Romanian link. I, I, you know, I've got the Romanian link because my wife is Romanian, so I get to say, "How do you say that name?" So, like, oh, that's Dragushan. Drag, okay, Dragushan from now on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one other player. Uh, Quite frankly, this could be just uh, a moot point because it's hiding up who we may be going after. But uh, this this talk about uh, Gallagher is that just talk? Mm. Is what he's the captain, isn't he, of Chelsea? He's the captain, but for them, on if you look at it financially and from their books side of things, it's one hundred percent profit for them, and it actually works really well in terms of paying off their FIFA financial fair play issues. It goes quite a long way towards doing that. I've, I've got a good feeling Pochettino would not be a happy bunny if Gallagher was sold out from underneath him because he's been their oh, captain. Okay. He's played pretty much every single game this season. Oh. Um, well, having said that, he was pretty awful in the last game. So, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, he's now I, suspended. So, I uh, oh, so he just fit right in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 I don't know about Gallagher. In some ways, yes, for the cover instead of. Hypex skip, hmm. but at the same time, would he want how how much would Gallagher want to play? Is would, would he be someone who'd sort of demand a, a a first team spot? I mean, obviously, if he's better than what we have, then that's fine. But I, I hope it wouldn't stand in the way of SARS development, for instance, who is Point. what I think he would kind of come in for him instead. And hmm. with SAR out now, whether for uh, African Cup or injury. Maybe Gallagher would be a good choice, but we can't just loan him. We can't loan him for like <laughs> one and a half month. <laughs> can we? Can we loan Kane for a month? <laughs> that would be nice. Um, no, I mean, if you look at it, you compare the players. He'd likely to be playing in the eight position. Um, so yeah, he'd be up against Hoiberg. I'm good with that. That's fine. I'll, I'll take Gallagher over Hoiberg. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I don't think I'd take Gallagher over Saar. Same. I don't think I'd take Gallagher over Bissouma playing in the six. I don't think well, we I'd take him over Bentancur playing in the six or the eight. Yeah. So, so we... I mean, you're spending fifty million pounds on a player who is likely to be riding the bench. So it's a lot of money. I think coming coming back to a point made earlier, what about Los Celso and all that? Because Los Celso yeah. can play those deeper roles, six and eights as well. Could Gallagher be the uh, sort of choice instead of Lo Celso if we decide to sell him, maybe not in January, but in the summer, because we're talking about having 18 months left in his contract? Is Gallagher an option there instead of him? Like, who would you rather have, Lo Celso or Gallagher? Like... I'd, I'd rather have a committed Gallagher than a Lo Celso that's got an eye on the, on the okay. exit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But also of course, some... they're both running out of contract at the same time. They'll both be out of contract to summer 2025. So there's a point where we look to sell him on next year, next summer, not not next year. It is 2024. Happy New Year again, everybody. Oh, um, but yeah, <laughs> going to take a little bit of getting used to that. Um, but yeah, there'll be a point that maybe we'll be looking to move him on in the summer and replace him at that point. But we've also got Alfie Devine coming back, who's playing really well at Port Vale and I think is going to be a hell of a player. And there's some very, very good youngsters coming through our development squad. Well, we have, and we haven't seen this guy Donnelly yet, really. We haven't, and I, I know you've spoken highly of him before, mm. Stu. Um, he's a midfielder, isn't? Is he not? He's an attacking midfielder, stroke forward. So uh -huh. yeah, he can play the ten, he can play the nine, he could probably play a little bit deeper, but he would be a very, very attacking option. Um, no, I mean the player I was thinking. Well, there's a couple of players I was thinking of, but one of the ones that immediately springs to mind is Tyrese Hall. I don't know if anybody's seen any of him. No, he's he's about the closest in profile 
I've seen anywhere to to Bisuma. His his ability is he's really good. He's 18 years old. This kid's got what's, yeah. what's his name? Tyrese Hall. He he oh, he's in our academy. Yeah, he's in our academy. Playing, he's played for our under 18s and our under 21s, and honestly, he looks like a proper player. So he was start. He started out at Chelsea. So he joined us from Chelsea's academy. H A W Hall. Hall. Yeah, Hall. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So we do have them, but you know, yeah, but he's eighteen, and you can't. It's difficult to throw an eighteen year old. I know. I know you're going to say Lewis Miles and. No, I don't know those players. No, I was. I was going to say like as 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 the 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 team and the players get into the Ange culture, will down the way. Will he then start dipping into the academy when he's feeling a little bit more comfortable? Yeah, because yeah. we've got we've got like a couple of players there, like as well Dorrington that's in and around, I guess, yeah. and Ashley Phillips. Is Ashley Phillips? Is that his name? Yeah, Ashley Phillips. Yeah, 19. and uh, and you you know in a, in a, yeah in a, in a year we've got that Croatian kid as well coming. Uh, two years. Uh, two, we'll, we'll twenty twenty five. Twenty is it? Isn't it twenty five? Uh, well, twenty twenty five. He's got to be 18. I think he's only just turned 16. So we're, pro we're probably going to have more games next season. That's so we Luka Vuskovic anyway. So, yeah, it, it does say in 2025, he'll join our club. But okay. I uh, don't know when when that is in the season. That's, you know, the other thing. We, we will have more games next season, most probably. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe he's, they will. Be more chances let's hope so. He, he is, t by the way, he is turning 17 in a month. Oh, is he? I thought he was um, younger than that. Okay. Uh, oh, well, well, two, in, in two months, put it that way. But yeah, yeah, like one and a half ish month. He's a he's a big boy. Though. He's yeah, a very yeah. big boy. And and I I you know that's another youngster coming through. That's on paper a <laughs> big talent. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got a lot of those players coming through. It's not we've got a lot of those players coming through. And if you look, we've got you know Vuskovic, we've got Phillips, we've got Dorrington, uh, Van der Ven's only twenty two, Romero's mm -hmm. only twenty five. We got seven years of you know of Romero. Doggy, how old is you, Doggy? Twenty-one. Doggy's twenty. Twenty. So, you know. Sa, what's Sa? Twenty. Twenty-one. 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 Yeah, twenty-one yeah. now. Yes, we do have but I'm just talking about extra strength in strength in reserve, so to speak. Yeah, and and even Pedro Poro has only just turned twenty-four. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's quite a young squad. Ridiculous for a player of his quality, honestly. Right, but yeah, yeah I'm not. It's, there's an awful lot to be looking forward to. Yeah. It, do, do we? Um. What? What? What do we think about this FA Cup game? Cup. It's next. It's on Friday, right? Um. FA Cup on yeah. Friday. I would not be surprised if we don't see Emerson start that one. I think we might. They might. He might look at it and go, "This is an opportunity to play Phillips," because wow. their main striker is out. He's having some issues. He won't be yeah. playing in this one. Um. So there is a chance. Ange looks and says, "Okay, we'll give Emerson a rest because he did take a knock in the Bournemouth game. Um, give him a chance to fully recover and be ready for the Man U game, which he may not be needed for. Um, but regardless, let's give Phillips a go and see what he does. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that change being made. Uh, we'll is, is. is any of the uh, African nation of are they gone? But are they?" They've gone, gone by now. that game. They've gone yeah, by that game. What about Sun? Is Sun going to be gone by that game? He's gone. Yeah, he's... He goes tomorrow, I believe. Okay, okay, fair enough. Because yeah. I was just looking at our squad, and I'm... So that's that only leaves Richarlison at striker, really, because, you know, there's no one else. Um, Dane Scarlett, Jamie Donnelly. Yeah. Yeah, at a push, yeah. yeah. But, and, and, <laughs> but players and, and who have I'm... played regularly for the first... Only Richarlison, yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to not be very popular for saying this, but I think the league... Is more important to us this season, maybe. I, I, I'm, I don't know, because I'd, I'd like to see us stay up in top four. So I kind of still fear for the injuries. If we go out with a strong team in the FA mm. Cup, and we end up with three injuries, we're going to sit and say, God, why didn't we just play the kids? Like, uh, not going to play entirely kids, but it's, you know, it's a chance to maybe play Dorrington, maybe play Skip and. Oh, uh, who else do we have? I'm looking at a team. It's just a list of injuries. Uh, it's just <laughs> oh, Donnelly, you know. Yeah, yeah, Donnelly, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. But, but, Brian Hill, probably going to play. Exactly. Brian Hill, I would not be. I would not be averse to us moving him on in this January, honestly. Um, no. 
he, he's a, he's got some lovely elements to his game, but he's just not fast enough. He's just not powerful enough to play in the Premier League. You, you've got to have pace, or you've yeah. got to have real strength to be able to bundle your like. Kulisevsky. Kulisevsky is quick when he gets going, but he doesn't have that immediate burst of acceleration. But he's a big, strong lad, and he can hold someone off and twist and turn them. He's got that technique. Um, whereas he'll, he's got the technique, but he'll get bundled over because he's just so lightweight. And but, I, but my my guess is he will play in the FA Cup. I think potentially, I would, I would be very wary about us playing too light a team because we've gone out early in the FA Cup in yeah, previous yeah. seasons, and we found that later on when other clubs are playing games, we just sat there twiddling our thumbs and it's actually hurt us by it's, disrupting the rhythm. It's simply due to the, the players we have available that I think yeah. it might end up being Richarlison, central striker, Johnson, possibly right winger, Hill, left winger, Kulisevsky, Cam, Lo Celso, somewhere in midfield as well, and then possibly Skip next to him in midfield mm-hmm. and then you know defensive make a choice of what we have available but um but yeah i you know i think it's going to be skip lo celso and kulisevsky maybe midfield i'm not sure what else we can kind of do um I don't know, well, i'd go benton cool oh benton yeah there's that yeah. i'm just benton cool skip lo celso i think would be my choice yeah that that's yeah I, I just still i don't know if yeah that's true he's just come back yeah yeah, here's here's a thought because one of the games I think when we were down ten men, they, uh, he moved. Which one? Uh, Kulishevsky. <laughs> <laughs> we moved. We moved Kul- Decky up to uh, center forward because um, hmm. he definitely he definitely can hold the ball up. You yeah. Know? Um, if we've got as as you just said, Stu, we've got those three midfield positions covered. Then yeah. what about moving him or even Johnson, who apparently can play across. All three front yeah. positions, including the striker position, the forward position, we could actually put. Uh, f- and he wants multi multifunctional players. We could flip that around, get Richarlison uh, uh, on the left, uh, Decky or Brennan Johnson in the middle. We could change it. Yeah, up. that's true. That's true. There are options. There are options now that we kind of, because we have those multifunctional players. There are options, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, and Ange actually used that word multifunctional. You know? Yeah, what was it? Potch used to say multidimensional or something. <laughs> I can't remember what Potch used to say. It was like dimensions, I think. <laughs> yeah, he loved his dimensions. Yeah. yeah. So we're all we're all feeling pretty positive, right? Um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty positive for Burnley. Um, Man U. We'll see what the team is that comes out. Obviously, it's going to be. It's gonna be a, be a more of a test than the Burnley game, but they're in terrible. They're they've yeah they're. I, I don't want to say they're in terrible form because they've had some wins, but every time they get put up against a the test, they crumble. I yeah, and they uh, you know I think their win was it three two they won against. No wait, Villa. what's what am I? Uh, yeah, there was one game where I thought it kind of papered over some of their cracks like because yeah. they get a win and they celebrate which I, I have always thought if you know if you score a last minute winner celebrate like you've won the league i don't mind because mm-hmm. that means your fans are backing you fair enough you know um i don't make fun of teams celebrating that but they it sort of papers over the cracks that if they'd lost that game for instance maybe it'd been like oh we need to fire a manager we need to do this and that same with chelsea for instance they won three two i think against uh who was it they played recently? Luton. Yeah. And Luton nearly made, they had a, was it off the post or off the bar a couple of times? And again, papered over the cracks of like, oh, they're probably not that good a team, Chelsea or United. So I think Chelsea just unbalanced. It will yeah, come. Yeah. There's some good players in there, but they've got too many young players and not enough experience to guide them through, mm. um, which could also be pointed at us because we've got a, very, a decent number of young players and. I mean, two starters over the age of of 25 for much of this season. But yeah, um, Man U, well, Brentford, sorry, Burnley, Burnley, Man U, Brentford up next after that, right at the end of the of the month. We've also got the fourth round on the 27th of January. So that was another game to stick in there as well. Um, and then straight after that, 3rd of February, we've got a Saturday midday kickoff against Everton which again, won't be particularly easy. So we've got some games coming up. We've got, we've got a little bit of a break 
to to try and get some players back and get bring some players through and get some training. Maybe bring a player or two in. Let's hope so. But uh, that's potentially a chat for another day because it's getting late. And uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. It has been great. Um, we will get together again. We will talk all things Tottenham. Let me see. That will be on the 6th of January. And uh, until then, gentlemen, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs>